So in this video, we're going to talk about causes of high B12 levels without supplementation. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in a pre previous video, we talked about um, what a high B12 level means and some things to think about with that. And um, since then, I've got a lot of interest and responses and actually got a uh, link to a research study that goes into a little bit more detail on this. Shout out to Samurai. I think I'm saying that right. Anyways, uh, thank you for uh, sending that uh, paper, which uh, so the basis of this video is kind of surrounding that uh, research paper. So I'm going to talk about some of the uh, more serious causes, uh, some more uh, problematic things that could be causing your high B12 level that you should uh, explore if you're having persistent elevated B12 levels. So if you're interested in this kind of information, keep watching. We're going to get into the details. We're all about helping you gain deeper knowledge and understanding of what's going on in your body. That's why we produce these videos. So hopefully this edition gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing these videos and uh, content that sometimes I get a slight thing wrong, like quoting something, a stat or a name of something. And so there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog, that has a lot more detail um, and will correct those mistakes if there are any. It doesn't happen that often, but sometimes it does. And the blog article will correct for those. Um, so I also wanted to point out that uh, if you like this type of information, please click on the like button um, and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you watching. Uh, if you do have any questions uh, about any of the content, either here or on the blog, uh, that's what the comment section is for to ask those questions. So again, thanks for watching and let's dig into it. So in this video, we want to discuss causes of high B12 levels when you're not supplementing. So there are many different causes of high B12 levels. But first, even though the video is on, you know, causes of without supplementation, uh, in my experience, uh, helping people try and figure this out, sometimes they are taking other sources of B12, even though they're not aware of it. So maybe in a multivitamin or a drink or a um, protein powder or something like that. So double check that you're not actually getting uh contamination, I guess you can say, or B12 from various sources that you're not aware of. Now, uh, in a previous video, we discussed, um, you know, why uh, someone might have uh, high B12 levels and what uh, elevated B12 levels uh, mean. And we talked about how uh, liver disease and cell membrane issues can be implicated in elevated B12 levels. And um, while that uh, still can be the case and, and still is the case, uh, what has come to my attention uh, is having more to do with the transportation of B12 via the transcobalamin uh, transport protein uh, is more of an issue or something that should be looked into uh, more thoroughly um, rather than the cell membrane issue. Now they both can still uh, you know, coexist and be uh, part of the issue and and, and solution, but um, uh, as we're going to get into here, we're going to look at some of the problems that can come up with the uh, transcobalamin, uh, the various transcobalamin transport proteins, and various diseases that can cause uh, elevated B12 when you're not supplementing with B12. So now, most often when there is elevated B12 levels, whether or not you're taking B, extra B12, it has nothing to do with alterations in these transport proteins called transcobalamins. And this is why most often when you have an elevated B12 level that comes up on your labs, it's ignored or sort of you know pushed to the side or um, you know explained away, I guess. Um, so, you know, but essentially, if, if you remain having elevated, uh, persistently elevated uh, B12 levels in the absence of supplementation, uh, you should explore this further because it could be an epiphenomenon or related to a deeper issue with B12 transportation. Um, so let's go into uh, how B12 is transported and why this is so important. So when B12 is transported uh, in the blood, it does so by way of three different uh, transporters, TCN1, TCN2, and TCN3. Um, however, only one of these transporters is actually functionally useful in delivering B12 into its target cells. That's the TCN2 transporter. Therefore, anything that raises TCN1 and TCN3 
will lower the functional activity of B12 by limiting uh, the binding of B12 to the TCN2. So basically it's all getting bound up by these other ones that don't really work that well for getting it into the cell. Um, now this doesn't necessarily explain the elevated B12 levels, but it does explain how one can be be deficient in B12 in the presence of higher serum uh, B12 levels. So, so what's actually causing the high B12 levels? Let's dive into that a little bit. So in the case that you've ruled out excess consumption of B12, it uh, makes sense to explore some of these other things. This doesn't mean necessarily you have these things, but these are some of the things that could be going on to cause elevated B12 in the absence of consuming extra in a supplement or a shot or something like that. So solid tumors uh, can cause elevated B12 levels. Most commonly it would be uh, liver tumors, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma in particular, um, and this can lead to elevated B12 levels due to poor uptake of B12 at the liver cells because they um, are not expressing as much receptors and some of those liver cells are also damaged. Um, and the same thing happens with liver disease, uh, whether it's acute or chronic uh, hepatitis, it can lead to increased um, release of B12 from the cells being damaged. And the same thing happens with the uh, carcinoma of the liver. Um, and then also, uh, so B12 can be released from the cells um, because basically it's a, it's where most of the B12 is stored when it is stored in the body and it is uh, B12 is stored in the body. So solid tumors, there's probably other cases of solid tumors outside of hepatocellular carcinoma, um, but those were the ones that were in the particular research study uh, that I looked at for um, getting more details on this. And then uh, blood cancers in general can lead to an increase in B12 levels um, due to an increased production of these TCN1 and TCN3 transcobalamin molecules. And they're made in particular cell lines like the uh, granulocytes in the uh, white blood cell lines. Um, and this is why typically <clears throat> it's referred to as myeloproliferative diseases. So um, the bone marrow is uh, increasing production of white blood cells. And if you're getting increased production of these particular types of white blood cells, you're gonna get more of these trans uh, uh, transcobalamins, the, uh, particularly granulocytes, will uh, have an affinity for producing the TCN1 and 3 and not so much of the TCN2, which are needed. Um, and uh, as a result, you get more of the binding of the, uh, of the B12 and uh, less of it is getting taken up into the cells uh, because it's all bound by the one and the three and not as much by the twos. Therefore, it just sort of um, circulates and never gets uh, into the cells. So uh, essentially, you know, these transcobalamin molecules are sitting in the cell uh, membrane. And so essentially this is still a problem with cell membrane issues, um, but it's more to do with the um, particular uh, types of uh, transport um, than the cell membrane itself. But in the fourth uh, scenario I wanted to uh, talk about is with liver disease, uh, liver, or sorry, kidney disease. Um, chronic kidney disease can also uh, affect B12 uptake by you know, the damaged cells in the kidneys can no longer take the B12 up. Um, and so there's more in the, in the bloodstream. And a lot of times kidney disease is affected by uh, inflammation. And uh, so that can be uh, another uh, relationship to um, uh, elevated B12 levels is just inflammation in general, um, which is very nonspecific, I know, but uh, uh, various cases of autoimmune disease have al also been described as causing elevated B12 levels like lupus, et cetera. But essentially with inflammation, you're, you are damaging the cell membranes. Uh, that is, you know, part of how inflammation uh, occurs is the cell membranes are, uh, are damaged and sort of uh, perpetuate the cascade of uh, inflammatory molecules 
molecules and you know when you have inflammation uh, or damage to the cell membranes the the transport mechanisms that allow the TCN to to take the B12 uh, through the cell membrane you know may be affected by that inflammation so inflammation would be I guess the, the fifth uh, uh, cause of uh, elevated B12 levels and so taking all those causes of elevated B12 levels into consideration when you're not supplementing uh, you should first find out if you're actually deficient in B12. So that sounds like, you know, an oxymoron. You're saying you're high B12, but you're actually deficient. Well, as noted above, uh, sometimes people are actually deficient in B12. Particular lab you can do to kind of screen for this. One of them is called methylmalonic acid, and the other one is called homocysteine, both of which would be elevated in the presence of um, uh, B12 deficiency with the methylmalonic acid in particular being of importance. And so if you are uh, finding high B12 levels and elevated methylmalonic acid, you would probably want to supplement with B12 uh, until that methylmalonic acid goes down. And you know, outside of that, persistently elevated B12 levels should be explored with like preliminary labs. Um, you know, outside of finding out if you're deficient, you should be checking to make sure you don't have uh, problems with your white blood cells, your kidneys, liver, etc. So these are typical labs that are done in a general screening uh, that, you know, are called CBC and uh, chem panel. Uh, almost all of them will have at least some look at uh, some of the things that would be altered in the case that you have um, you know some of these conditions. Now there are chance there are also possibility that uh, you know it doesn't come up in those screenings. So if you're having uh, persistently elevated B12 levels, uh, a thorough investigation should be explored with a blood specialist called a hematologist. Um, <clears throat> and in the absence of being able to resolve the B12 uh, elevated B12 with your primary care doctor, uh, that you know should be should be looked at and have a more thorough screening with them. Um, but uh, I will be uh, posting another video about what to actually do about uh, high B12 levels and go into a little bit more detail on some of the things. So I hope this video was helpful in giving you a deeper understanding of the causes of elevated B12 level when you're not supplementing with B12. Previous video, uh, what does high B12 level mean, went into some detail on this information as well, so you might want to check that out. Um, if you like this information, uh, click on the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I will be posting another video on what to do about elevated B12 levels in a little more detail in a few weeks or months. We'll see you next time.